Hello and welcome to another development log of Project 3rd IVR. There are a lot of new things that I can show you, so let's start by spawning some cubes by going into tools. Oh, a lot of new items. And spawning the spawn gun. So, there we have a few cubes. And now something that has changed is, slow-mo is now toggleable, so you can turn it on and off by pressing the X button of the left controller, the primary button. So you turn it on, so now I'm in slow-mo, and I can turn it off whenever I want. So in previous versions it was just pressing the button, and it, was, uh, it would stay for two seconds, I guess, that what it, that's what it was. So, and now another thing is, Jumping is now on A, so if I press A, I will uh, crouch down, and if I release the A button, uh, yeah, the legs will be pushed into the ground and I jump. So if I press A for, let's say, half a second, I will do a simple jump. So and if I uh, use the right joystick, I just will go down and up, and I will stay in that position, so it's not proportional anymore, but it's uh, linear now, uh, it's, it's accumulative. So I could do something like this now also, so I uh, bringing up the legs as much as possible, then pull myself onto this cube in this example, and then I could just go back up again and I'm on the cubes. Very cool. Yeah, I think that's it for jumping. I changed it because a lot of people didn't know how to jump. They assumed that it works like in Boneworks. And if it doesn't work like in BoneLab or Boneworks, people will just assume that it is just broken and frequently ask me to add jumping to the game. And uh, yeah, that's why I simply changed it to the conventions because otherwise I would have to explain the mechanics in a tutorial and that's a lot of work. Um, yeah, so that is the reason I changed Jumping. So, what else is there to say? I added a few props. Like... What is new? Oh, that's weapons. Nothing new in weapons. I think you already know the skateboard. And... We got a plunger. I think that's one, that one is new as well. So, uh, just will be fixed to any object. And uh, yeah, it has some breaking torque at some point. Yeah, and it plays the sound. It's not strong enough so you can climb with it. It will just, uh, yeah, it just won't work. But uh, I think this is a fun tool. And of course it works on NPCs, which is also really fun. So uh, let's get the delete gun really quick. What is that? I don't know, let's find out. So another thing that I did to delete objects, <coughs> I made this spawned list, and now you have a list of everything that you have spawned, uh, everything that fits into this list, to be uh, specific, because I don't know how to expand the space to the size of the list. However, here are items displayed that I spawned, for example, the cube gun, it's right there, and if I say uh, delete the cube gun by pressing this bin icon, the cube gun is gone. And also the thing over right, way over there it was the skateboard, I guess. And we have the delete gun, so let's delete all of them. The cubes are not in the in the spawned objects list. Maybe I should add them. I don't know. Yeah, but that's how you can delete objects even if they are not uh, right in front of you. So you could uh, not only delete them with the delete gun and also delete them by the spawn list. Very nice. And also you could refresh if you spawn something and clear all to delete everything in the scene, except for the cubes. <laughs> now, um, let's go into tools because there are a few new things that I could show you. For example, this is a spawn gun. So it says press secondary button to bring up menu. So that's the, uh, the right, I think it's the B button on the right controller. And now we have a menu, 
with all kinds of things, for example, a bench. And then we can just point on the floor in a specific range, so that is a minimum and maximum range. And now we can spawn things there. There it is. Or we could get an OBS board. And now we have a few boards. Very nice. What else can we can we spawn? A shopping cart. Let's get a shopping cart. Yeah, I think that's it. That's how the spawn gun works. So uh, let's put it in the inventory. And uh, I made this for large props like uh, the shopping cart and all that because it doesn't really fit well into the uh, spawn menu. And also if, the, if I uh, do some more work on the mechanics of the spawn gun, I think it will completely uh, be, be the exchange for the spawn menu. So, and what else can I show you? There are a lot of things like this lever or all of these sensors or this thruster that has different functionalities, functional now. And we have this pyramid. So first of all, let's uh, spawn a table really quick. Oops. Uh, spawn gun, here it is. Uh, let's spawn a table. Here we go. So this is uh, something that I, you could call a computer. So basically what you do is you hold it in your hand and press trigger and that opens the node space or the visual scripting of project I. And basically you have a menu with uh, inputs, modifiers and outputs. It all leads you into nodes. For example, you could spawn a node that says number. And you could spawn a node that says exposed. And we go to display. And what this does, it, is, it spawns nodes in the middle of this node space. And now we can drag them around. So we have a number node and a display node. And we can connect the number node to the display node. So this is an output uh, and this is an input. So outputs are always on the right side and inputs are always on the rest, right, uh, left side of the node. And uh, you, click the, you click the output and then the input and then there will be a connection. And now what this connection does, it transfers the value in this node into this node. So this is a number node with a number pad. So you click in one and now the value is one and it will be transferred to the display node which only purpose it is to display a value that it receives in the input node and now it says one as well so we have 16 and it says also 16 very nice so that's basically how it works so that's just a static number but we could also have uh, joystick inputs for example <coughs> so let's delete this connection by clicking the input that will automatically remove the connection now we could connect the joystick node to the display node. So for example, let's go with the right vertical. And now I could uh, use my joystick of the, right joy uh, of the right controller. And as you can see, it ranges from zero to one. And also if I go down, it's zero to minus one. But uh, that's, that's taken by crouching this input. That's why uh, I'm crouching. So that's how you get values in the, in the visual scripting thing. And now what can we do with it? For example, we could um, make a rocket powered vehicle. So let's uh, spawn the ATV really quick. And now what the ATV does, when you go on the ATV, just by moving on it, you can, uh, you can uh, hit the gas by using the right joystick. So it's the, um, uh oh, Stop. Yeah. Stay where you are. Ugh. Yeah, very nice. Uh, so um, it works by using the right joystick. So it's the right vertical. Now what I can do is I can add thrusters to the vehicle. So uh, let's spawn a few thrusters really quick. The tools. So first of all, we need a nail gun to fix the thrusters to the vehicle. Oh Jesus. So uh, also these thrusters work just by raising the joystick. Oh. 
So um, if you grab them and use the joystick, they will thrust into any direction uh, forward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix them to this vehicle. So let's take... Oh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying because the input is uh, twice. So you want to move and also it uh, it's controlling the thruster, so that's not optimal. Yeah, very nice. So we have three thrusters on the ATV. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the uh, the joystick value of the right vertical to the thrusters and I'm doing this by going into output nodes and then I'm spawning exposed and now um, an exposed node will appear and uh, as you can see I have this drop down menu with four thrusters so the first one is the thruster laying over there and the Second one is one of these thrusters, so if I hook it up, as you can see, it already works. So let's do this to all thrusters, so uh, two more exposed nodes, like this. So, uh, and the drop-down menu, they will be in the order they, they have been spawned. Oh, let's uh, redo this really quick. Yeah, that's the second one. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and the last one. Now I've selected all the thrusters from the ATV and I connect and I can connect the uh, right vertical joystick to all of these thrusters. Very nice. So uh, every output can have multiple inputs connected but only but inputs can only have one output. So that's how it works with the uh, node scripting thing. So uh, so let's try the vehicle. Let's go onto the vehicle. And as you can see, oh Jesus, it's a lot faster than the original vehicle. And they all. It's even hard to control. Stop it. Come back. Also, I lowered the center of mass of the ATV, and that's why uh, it doesn't flip over anymore that often. So let's get down. Oh no. Well, it doesn't move if, if it is not entered. Very nice. So uh, yeah, that's basically what you can do with the node, node scripting. You can have custom inputs and then create all kinds of behaviors by uh, uh, hooking them up to custom outputs. So you have inputs, so the same is true for inputs. So you could uh, select an input exposed and then you could uh, get the input of of this lever, for example. So let's uh, fix the lever to the table really quick. So now we have uh, uh -oh. we have the lever fixed to the table. And now what I'm going to do is I'm spawning an output node, display, so I can see what's what value it outputs connected to the display. And now um, I only have one uh, I only have one input device, so which is this lever. That's why it, it only shows one thing in this menu oh and uh, yeah so uh, now we can control the lever and as you can see we have a value ranging from minus one to one on this lever I don't know why I'm moving the whole table when I'm trying to do this um, but that's how you get inputs and you can have all kinds of inputs for example there is a uh, a distance sensor like this one but uh, yeah now I have to spawn a new exposed node because uh, the list is not updated automatically oops that was an output can we delete this one go into inputs exposed oops expose 